good morning <laughs> to everybody. I'm pleased to be here, thanks to the organization of, of this panel. Um, the work um, that we are going to present here is about the evolution of Ibero-American journalist level conditions. And this is based in the evidence from the works of journalism study open data. So this work presents a longitudinal and comparative statistical analytics of the results of the first uh, and second wave from 2007-11, the first, and 2012-17, um, the second, of worth of journalists study surveys about the socio-demographic profile and working conditions of journalists in Spain, uh, Portugal, Chile, uh, Mexico, and Brazil. So, uh, to, begin, uh, to begin with an introduction uh, to the change suffered by Ibero-American journalists in their working conditions, uh, we must first talk about a new communication environment based on digitization and interactivity. So, uh, since the arrival of information and communication technologies in the sector, it's clear that the journalistic profession is in a context that changes and uh, evolves rapidly and constantly. So, the traditional model suffers a crisis that has been reflected in the uh, emergence of digital media and new ways of doing journalism which involves new profiles and uh, professional skills. So in the case of uh, Ibero-American journalists, to this new reality, we must add the socio-demographic situation that may affect their professional reality, uh, such as the lack of your offers, the surplus of graduates in the specialty of journalist and social communication, low wages, uh, precariousness, job instability, media concentration, and uh, state interventionists. Uh, furthermore, journalists need to survive on low wage leads them to accept multiple independent jobs, sell advertising, uh, works on, in various media outlets sim simultaneously and live at the risk of crime, drug trafficking, and uh, power pressures. There is a need to know the possible uh, difference between countries and especially between the two geographic subregions, such as uh, Latin America and Iberian Peninsula, and this potential difference that may occur in an area as extensive and diverse as Ibero-America. Have increased interest in comparative studies, uh, professional practice, cultures in each, this, uh, in each of these regions in, in the last decade. So, uh, working conditions of Euro American journalists. This work addresses uh, this term through elements such as professional experience, education level and which are usually associated with the phenomenon of precariousness or low wages. Also, there are two different problems. They often occur together um, and have similar effects on the journalist's job insecurity. So due uh, to the hybridization of the profession, the part of participatory nature of journalist culture and um, above all the polarized, polarized uh, ideological journalist model, the journalist maintains a pulse between regional and national government, which must pressure and interest in controlling the media. As for, for issues of violence, uh, Latin America was the second most dangerous region in the world to practice journalism, only behind the Middle East. So, as the region is undergoing a formal and generalized uh, process of democratization, there is still an atmosphere of li limit uh, professional autonomy defined by commercial, politics, uh, and cultural interest or, or convention. Another factor to highlight here is gender, 
um, because um, gender in the journalistic profession continues to be um, very large in, in the very Ibero-American countries. So there is this work uh, seeks to know if there are differences in the possible chance experience between the countries of the Ibero-American region, Spain and Portugal belonging to the Iberian Peninsula in Europe, and the rest, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, uh, from the Latin American region. The chance produced between journalists from both regions are studied as well as journalists from different countries, following the line of multiple uh, comparative studies. Previous analyses are, have included comparisons of Ibero-American countries, but there is still very little presence of studies focused on journalists and journalists. So much less is still um, the number of academic approach that address the evolution of the journalistic profession in Ibero-America from a longitudinal perspective. And this is the most uh, relevant aspect that this study introduced. So what is uh, the goal? Well, having um, seen, have seen all, the goal of this uh, study is um, to study how the journalistic profession has changed in the decade between 2007 to 2017 in the uh, Ibero-American countries especially carrying out a comparative analysis both between subregions and Ibero-American countries and between time periods. Finally, these are the three research questions. The first one is, have the socio-demographic profiles and working conditions of Ibero-American journalists changed between this period, 2007 to 17? The second one is, has the relationship between the journalists' gender and working conditions changed between this same period in Ibero-America? And the third one is, and the in case there have been changed, and are there differences between the countries studied in how they have done it? So uh, next, David will explain the methodology forward and the main results obtained. So, uh, Thank you very much for your attention. Um, okay, thank you, Patricia. Um, exactly, we are, um, let's begin now in the methodology. Um, as we already mentioned, we are talking about open data. And the one we are using here is the one from Worlds of Journalism Study. It is probably one of the most relevant uh, studies worldwide that are taking place right now uh, regarding uh, journalism practice. Um, the countries we use are those five, Brazil, Chile, Mexico, Portugal, and Spain. Um, first, because they are representative uh, enough we consider for the Ibero-American region we have the most populated ones Brazil and Mexico we have countries from the Latin American region and from the European one and um, uh, the truth is also that those are only the only five countries that were present in the first and in the second wave one of the problems of open data is that we are uh, conditioned by the study that was taking place originally. And although we would have been interested in uh, analyzing other countries, um, only those five were present in the first wave. So we couldn't analyze uh, or we couldn't compare any others because uh, this comparison between periods was the most interesting. Um, uh, well, the first wave, uh, as it has been already mentioned, it goes between 2007 and 2011. There it was a, a sample of 100 journalists List in each country, so it was not a representative sample. Uh, the one in the second wave was already a representative sample with those um, confidence and, and uh, level and margin error that we see on the screen. And the process of the sampling was a two-step one. Uh, first, there was a sample of news media in each country, so media from different um, aspects, uh, digital, TV, press, etc., would be included, and then the selection of journalists within each um, medium. The measures we are analyzing are those, we are going to analyze them a bit more in detail now in the results, but um, obviously there were many other uh, variables in the original study, but we are using those ones because they are the ones most uh, in connection with precariousness and job instability, which is our ultimate goal, right, to analyze this uh, condition regarding this uh, possible precariousness uh, of journalists in, this country, in these countries. 
So some socio-demographic changes that we observed between the two waves. First, that uh, we have younger journalists in the second wave. Uh, gender stays more or less stable with a light majority of men in both uh, waves, which uh, represents quite uh, accurately the proportion of men and women in uh, Ibero-American journalism. And then, and this is quite relevant, there is a big and important decrease of uh, income, of salaries. That is going to lead us to the working conditions that journalists uh, are forced to accept. For example, and a very relevant one is the fact that more and more journalists are forced <coughs> sorry, to work for several media, to find jobs outside of, of, of uh, journalism, outside of media, because it's not enough with one stable job to, uh, to earn a decent or, or, a, uh, uh, or enough uh, salaries. Uh, also, this is because there are less journalists working full time uh, that also leads to, obviously to more part-time workers. There is also a lot of freelancers, which is not necessarily necessarily a lower income, but it's a much more unstable one. Um, something that also is quite relevant according to previous studies is that um, the university degrees are still very important. There's a huge majority of journalists having university degrees. And the proportion of them having studies in the field, uh, such as journalism or communication, has grown. Uh, but also a huge decrease, uh, decrease we have observed in the, in the years of professional experience. First, because journalists are, are younger, also because they are changing jobs more often. So this professional experience has also uh, decreased. This is a bit more uh, in detail, uh, the figures uh, and the comparisons of, um, of both waves. We are not going to stop here because it's pretty much a, a more detailed um, explanation of what I just mentioned. If we want to discuss it later, we can, we can get back to it. Uh, regarding the gender gap, uh, we don't have much time, so I'm just going to go quite fast, saying that women are um, younger and earn lower incomes. That's something that we could already uh, expect, but we have confirmed. Um, there is not a significant change between waves. It is true that there are more significant differences between men and women in the second wave, but we believe that that is partly or to a great extent because of the bigger sample in the second wave, what makes um, differences more significant. But in general, we don't believe, according to the study in a more detailed observation, that the distribution of precariousness has changed between uh, men and women. Uh, national and regional differences, we must say that uh, there are differences indeed uh, between uh, Latin America and the Iberian Peninsula, between the countries of those both uh, regions. Um, they are bigger in the second uh, wave. Um, and regarding countries, we have seen that Brazil has experienced the most significant differences between the first and the second wave. Uh, the situation there is uh, significant, significantly worse, more precarious. Um, now than um, in the first wave. It has happened the same in Mexico, Chile, and Spain, but here differences are not so big. So let's say that the um, situation has not worsened uh, so much. We must think also that Brazil entered into an economic crisis a bit later than countries like uh, Spain or Portugal. So probably that is something that is reflected in, in the years of, of these two waves. And then finally, Portugal is not um, hasn't experienced a lot of changes, so we can consider it a more stable country, but uh, there is no data regarding income in the second wave, which is uh, quite an important limitation because uh, the income, the decrease of, uh, of the wages of salaries was very big in all the other countries. So uh, it would have been good to know that about Portugal, but well, that is one of the limitations of, uh, of open data also, right? So uh, the fact that we have the information that was needed or possible in the moment it was collected for our study, that would have been particularly interesting, but this is a secondary study, so we don't have information. And uh, I'm already finishing. Um, I want to highlight the novelty of the study. Uh, it's, uh, as Patricia mentioned, uh, the comparison between countries, but also, and most important, between two waves. Uh, this study actually is, has been already accepted, or um, a similar version for publication in a journal. So. Um, we believe that this comparison, this longitudinal comparison is quite uh, relevant and interesting. Uh, the discoveries in general are in the line with previous works. Uh, it agrees with most of the previous um, literature existing. And the most important discovery uh, or, or confirmation is this uh, existence of uh, a stronger precariousness, less stability in the works, which 
It's probably not good news, but uh, it is uh, yeah, the observation, the most relevant one we made. The gender gap is still relevant, but we believe that its, present, uh, its presence is uh, decreasing. Uh, probably not strong between these two waves, but with a longer time frame, we could probably see how this gender gap, little by little, very little by little, is decreasing. The national and sub-regional differences that we that we already mentioned that uh, obviously they, they exist even if we are within a particular region region as uh, Ibero America, and then <clears throat> the importance of, of open data uh, we are uh, using here uh, once again the ones of uh, worlds of journalism uh, study. The importance of this data is um, that we have access to a huge amount of uh, information that uh, without this uh, study we would have never been able to, to, to access to. Uh, obviously, there is the limitations, mostly the ones of the first sample that I already mentioned. But also, we have uh, an important um, potential for the study of future waves. Right now, the third wave of, uh, of this study is going to, to take place. It's, it's being prepared. So we believe that in the future, we will be able to compare not only the second and the third wave, which will have access to a lot of uh, countries already, the second wave had a lot, uh, uh, many more Ibero-American countries present, but also because it will allow us to compare the first, the second, and the third, which will be a, a longer time frame. And for example, this gender gap, we will be able to compare it in a, in a longer time, time frame. So um, that's it. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. And sorry if we uh, went a bit over, over the time limit. And yeah, thank you. <laughs>